Hey there, so today we're going to be taking a look at the entirety of the Bioshock franchise running without a graphics card. That's right, we're going to be taking a look at this classic series running on this little mini PC with integrated graphics. Now this is a B-Link SCR5 mini PC and the specs of it are a Ryzen 5 5600H with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now the APU itself has 6 cores, 12 threads based off of Zen 3 and we are looking at a 7 core GPU with a max clock speed of 1800 megahertz. And we're going to see just how well this does in this classic franchise. And if we jump into the first game, you can see here that the performance that we're getting is absolutely fantastic. Now, this is the original release of the game. Now, it may be running exceptionally well here, as you would expect from a game from 2007, but I did encounter an issue where the sound didn't work. It just was not working. I'm not sure if I had to do something else to mess with it to get the sound to actually start working or something but just out of the box this is how it was performing and i just did not have any sound which was a huge huge detriment to the overall experience looking at the pc gaming wiki though there does seem to be a fix for it i just did not apply that in the middle of testing it but just in general the level of performance that we're getting here is pretty fantastic we are of course with everything maxed out and we are getting a high refresh rate gaming experience with our one percent lows barely dipping under 100 so in general that means that this is going to be a rock solid gaming experience Experience, really going to have very very little to complain about it is pretty much the most ideal situation for a game like this but being that the game is at this point 15 years old it should not be surprising that it actually performs well on a system like this but still a welcome sight to see for the second game in the franchise we actually finally have sound working which is great to see but there is a noticeable gap in terms of performance where this is a more demanding game though not by a super significant margin our averages are still looking rock solid but our one percent lows are now at 60 instead of being well above 60. in general you're really going to struggle to really have anything to complain about here though it is a beautiful experience it runs absolutely perfectly and it's really again the most ideal situation of course it is a 13 year old game but still visually speaking the art style holds up and there is a lot of fun to be had here but of course we are going to be looking at later on the remasters of these games but just in general the original games themselves perform perfectly fine and since we are looking at DirectX 10 for both of them using something like DXVK might actually be to your benefit though it's really not something that is necessary since both perform perfectly fine on this specific system itself. But if we jump on over to Bioshock Infinite, we're now looking at the game running at the very high preset. We are not at Ultra. Ultra did end up impacting the performance pretty significantly, but very high pretty much gets you all of the visual quality without any of that performance impact. And you can see here that it is running beautifully. We're getting a very, very similar experience to Bioshock 2 here. But visually speaking, there are some noticeable improvements. And this is aesthetically one of my favorite games of all time. It just looks so gorgeous. And it still holds up real well, considering that this is going to be the 10 year anniversary of this game's release. In general, I have very, very little to complain about here. It was a joy to look at this game all over again. It really does hold up really, really well. And in general, you can find this game for right, really, really cheap a lot of the times, so along with the rest of the franchise. And if you were lucky enough, Epic Games did end up giving away the franchise. But of course, they did not give away the original games. They gave away the remasters, and we're going to look how those perform on here as well unfortunately this game itself still has not gotten a remaster but the original version still holds up really well visually speaking so really while a remaster would be nice it isn't something that i feel like is in dire need in comparison to the first and second game where they were outdated enough that just getting a remaster out the door was a nice improvement and actually taking a look at bioshock remaster you can see here that there are some pretty noticeable visual improvements it's nothing groundbreaking doesn't fundamentally mentally change the overall quality of the game significantly you just get some nicer texture a little bit nicer lighting overall it is an improvement it's just not something that is groundbreaking by any means but in general it is a really nice improvement especially since it does end up performing really really well so far with the entirety of the franchise as we've seen so far you are able to do some pretty high refresh rate gaming on here at the highest graphic settings which is the most ideal situation pretty much means that you are 
are able to play through the franchise perfectly fine get the full experience and in a lot of ways actually play this better than anyone that originally played this game like if you grew up playing this on consoles or even on pc it really is great to see that the remasters are able to actually keep the high refresh rate gaming experience going while also giving us a little bit better improved visual quality you honestly miss out on pretty much nothing while getting an overall better visual quality experience here and of course we can wrap this up by taking a look at bioshock 2 remastered running in a lot of ways this was even performing better than the original version of bioshock 2 which always had a bit of a rocky port over to pc the level of performance was very inconsistent back in the day with modern systems now you could pretty much brute force your way but there were still these inconsistent issues throughout the entirety of the experience that i feel like the remastered version actually ended up fixing now these remasters actually ended up being pretty controversial because when they first launched they had a lot of issues but at least from what i managed to play through of them this time around there was no real crashing issues there was no real slowdown or anything like that which were very common problems when they actually first launched i had a friend that actually is a huge fan of the franchise and as she tried to play through the remasters she found herself having a lot of issues and none of those issues were present here which is very very nice to see and she was using a system that actually had a full dedicated graphics card and everything so it definitely wasn't necessarily a lack of hardware as much as it was the software really failing and it's nice to see that that is not a problem here at all so the big takeaway here is that you're going to be able to play this entire franchise perfectly fine with high refresh rate gaming on this system with absolutely no problems whatsoever whether you're playing the original versions or the remasters you're going to get a awesome experience at pretty much the highest settings the only one where you needed to turn anything down was bioshock infinite and all you had to do was just instead of going with ultra you go with very high if you could tell me with a straight face that you can actually genuinely see a difference between the very high setting and ultra i would be shocked there's just no possible way that you could tell the difference between the two so just go with the very high setting because if you go with ultra you're looking at it at 30 fps average while if you go with the very high setting you're looking at more like a 90 fps average you pretty much 3x your level of performance for no impact to the visual quality in general i am just really impressed with, by what the b-link ser5 mini pc can actually do here the level of performance that we got is remarkable i am so impressed i'm so blown away it is a classic franchise and it gave such a wonderful experience playing this on a 144 hertz display was just a joy and these were actually some of the first games that i ever bought on steam so being able to come back and actually play through them and see them in such high fidelity in a lot of ways better than what i was actually playing with back in the day because back then i had a 1600 by 900 display not even full 1080p and i wasn't exactly running these games at the maximum graphics settings it's just nice to see that a mini pc nowadays can let you actually go back and play a franchise that still holds up to this day both visually speaking because the art style is just so unique and so good and the gameplay also just really holds up so i would definitely recommend giving this franchise a go if you're on a mini pc like this or just on integrated graphics whether you've never managed to actually play it and you now have the chance to or you're looking to revisit it after playing it on the consoles you're still going to be able to get the best possible experience out of it on a system without a graphics card so i hope you found this video interesting useful or entertaining if you did be sure to subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next one and if you're interested in picking up this mini pc you can check out the amazon affiliate links down below